Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and today I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Virgo. If Virgo is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Now, let's see. I hope you all are doing well. The sun is out. The snow is melting here. The birds are singing. It's not quite spring, but it feels like a spring day. Okay, let's see. Hmm. This one's a little, this is an interesting, <laughs> an interesting grouping of formations here. Okay, so I'm going to get closer to the camera here. Okay, so I want to start with, where do I want to start? <laughs> um, I kind of want to start with, let's look at this one. So here we have, and at first I thought, okay, this is a turtle. Then I thought, maybe it's like a possum, but I think it's a turtle. And I'll tell you why. Um, well, because of the back mostly, but also because interestingly enough, we have another turtle formation right here. And this one doesn't have the tail so much, but it looks like it is very much mirrored, if you can see here and here. So this little turtle, one of my most favorite, most sacred uh, symbols that ever come into my life here and there, um, for me, it is so much related to my mother. It was my mother's totem animal. And um, she has passed away for many years now, but I still have um, turtles around the house that remind me of her. But also we know that the turtle is a symbol of just going slowly, using intention, um, this idea that we become um, just so married to the path that we stay the course, but we're not rushing through it, right? We're taking our time. We're doing things the way that we feel should be done. We're, um, in this one, it, you can see that its tail is out. Its head is up, looking upward. So if you've ever been around a turtle, you know that if they get scared, they go into their shell. Their tail goes in, their legs go in, their head goes in. Um, when you see them and they have their head out, their tail out, they're in a walking posture, then they are on the move and they're feeling safe. Um, the sun is probably also out like it is today. They like to um, sun themselves, get nice and warm. Um, if you live in a place that has, has turtles, has water around, I live in an area that has a lot of lakes. So, um, during the summer, especially when you go on these like hiking trails and such, you will definitely find turtles kind of hanging out near the asphalt and along the sides of the the lake just sitting on rocks and such <laughs> and they're really cute um so i feel that you are really really about about this movement forward right now i think that you have really um you know conquered some things and you are not in any hurry okay i think that you know there are times when um, we feel like we have to get everything done right now. We have to, um, 
you know, I don't know. Here's an example, I guess. Lose all the weight right now. We got to get it all worked off of us. Or we have to, um, you know, uh, quit whatever thing we're doing. Become completely abstinent of it. Mine this last last year was uh, stopping drinking diet pop. <laughs> and I had to just quit, right? Um, and now I will admit once in a while I do have a pop while I'm out. But um, I just had to get it out of my... I all I had to... I have to stop stuff cold turkey, okay? That's my, that's just my personality. But there is this feeling of urgency sometimes and we just got to get everything done. It's, you know, kind of a frantic feeling. The change has to come right now, right now, right now. Well, that's okay, but we have to keep in mind, and I think that you are very aware of this, is that um, there needs to be consistency, longevity in these changes, okay? And this, and I was bringing up this idea of losing weight because it makes me think of, and let me just say, um, you know, I don't promote any kind of, um, you know, whatever. I'm a, I feel like I'm a pretty body positive person. My weight has gone up and down. I don't, you know, I don't do all the calorie counting and, you know, this and that. And that's fine if you do. Um, I'm, I just, I guess I say that because I come from a generation of people who, you know, um, can, uh, become very fixated on these kind of diet fads and stuff. And so for myself, um, because I can be an obsessive person, um, I try not to do that with those things because, you know, I will just stay so, so into it. <laughs> so anyways, um, my point with that is that sometimes, right, this concept of getting on these diets that like you lose weight really quick and, um, you know, I get, what do they call them? Like the fad diets and like the, um, I don't know, the ones, just things that you, where you lose a lot of weight fast, right? And then you get off the diet and you start gaining weight back again quickly. Okay, so um, that's not, that's an example of um, n not having that longevity, not having the consistency, right? So, I think that a lot of people now have gotten into these ideas of changing your lifestyle. So going into like whole foods or, um, you, you know, I don't know, becoming like a, I saw one the other day. It's like, a, you become, or what is it called? It's a, the carnivore diet, I think, where you eat mostly just meat, red meats and stuff. So, um, you know, I mean, that's, that's maybe a diet, a fad diet too. I don't know. <laughs> um, but it's more of a whole lifestyle change, right? It's about, it's about changing how you think about food, how you, you know, your relationship with it. And this is not about food. I know I'm going down this metaphor rabbit hole pretty deep. Okay. <laughs> but the point is that you are coming I think away from this, this kind of, um, you know, finding different things that, that you're trying to find something that fits with you. You have been searching for maybe religion, maybe spirituality, maybe a new exercise routine, maybe a new creative process, maybe a new relationship. Okay. But you have come away from this, um, this place of trying to get it all at once right? And you're taking your time. You're letting, you're letting the universe come to you. And I think that this is also a beautiful example of that. Just looking, the head is up. There's this upward gaze, which usually when I see these formations and the gaze is upwards, it makes me think that this is a spiritual posture. And where do I get that from? There are, um, a lot of different votive statues, but I am thinking right now about the ones that come out of Mesopotamia and they are these beautiful little humanoid statues with huge eyes, right? And the, their pupils look dilated, their gazes are fixed 
upwards. And what has been hypothesized is that these are um, postures of awe, okay? The awe of God, the awe of witnessing, you know, the ineffable or the, un the thing that you cannot utter, okay? This overtaking of beauty and light and, um, you know, just pure spiritualism and and divinity and so on so when i see when i see an animal in my formations it has its head up it really is that kind of feeling and now how else can we relate this it, i would relate it also to um going outside and looking at the sky looking at the trees looking at you know oh my goodness my favorite is you know, in the middle of summer when all the leaves are on the trees and you have a nice cool day and it's a beautiful blue sky and um, there's like a breeze going through and all the leaves, there's a million leaves dancing and you can just look up there and it looks like they're just all glittering. Um, it's just so gorgeous, right? And so those are moments of just, you know, awe of the nature, the, the beautiful universe, the beautiful ecosystem that we are so privileged to live in, to be a part of, um, to commune with. Okay. And now I think this is so interesting because this beautiful, this beautiful turtle is kind of in the spiral here so i think this has been you know it's this is your path you've been you've been on this journey this is you're not new to it okay i think that um but you know you are you're not new to it you you know you've been you've been at it for a while but you are really getting to a place where you're making decisions and putting your efforts and energy into places that you know are going to be of service to you to your family to your immediate community and that's so important that's such a beautiful place to be in okay and i think that um you know it could take years really to get to um, that place in your mind where you get over some of these kinds of initial, um, you know, there's a lot when you come into your awakening, as people like to call it, uh, there's a lot of um, pull towards uh, hysteria, paranoia, being just so upset about things that are usually out of our control, right? And so we go on our journey and we try to change things and we try to be of service and we try to, you know, make our little dent in the world. And, and that's great. But I think at some point we get to this place in our mind where we realize that you have to work so deeply on your, on your own um, traumas, your own hurts, uh, your own, um, you know, problems with living you know, all the many things that are hard to overcome, if they've been conditioned, if they're by nature, um, you know, environmental, whatever it is, okay, we all have our things. And uh, when we get to this point in our life where we really have to um, not only take responsibility for our own development, but also you know, get into a place of like deep empathy and love and, and shedding of those, uh, you know, all of that shame we carry around, the guilt we carry around, um, you know, the lamenting and even the longing, you know, the longing for what we don't have or what we used to have or what we wish would happen, all those things. Those are all, um, those are all kind of like, I like to think of it as like a mental prison, but those are like kind of the guards that keep us in, right? They stand at the door and when we're ready to get out of that prison, they, you know, kind of stand in our way. <laughs> and I think that with this slower, more um, intentional, thoughtful kind of uh, work progress, 
that we do day in and day out. And th these are things, let me give you some examples too about what I'm talking about. These are things that we implement into our routines that we, um, you know, we when we, things as simple as when we say something that like we tell somebody we're gonna do something, we make sure we do it, okay? Uh, or do not say things out of, um, you know, out of some feeling to hurt somebody. We don't, you know, especially if we are getting older. I mean, there's just no reason for us to be out here hurting people's feelings, even if they've hurt our feelings. There's no reason to be fighting with people, um, you know, on the internet or in real life or whatever. We really, you know, have to work on those things. And yes, they happen. Listen, I'm married and I have a toddler. So, you know, there's some, <laughs> you know, there's disagreements that go on. But what I'm talking about is not saying things. Don't call names. Don't go out there and put your business on the internet. Don't, you know, um, argue in public that kind of stuff. And when you do argue, you know, get that, get that stuff resolved, you know, before it really turns into resentments. And, um, here's my, this is my little speech I'm doing. <laughs> um, I do think though that with this kind of work, we, those things can be relieved of us. Okay. And, you know, I'll just tell you, I've, been very proud of myself in the last years that I don't fight with people on the internet anymore. When I was younger, I would, you know, get into the comments and, you know, talk a little mess here and there. <laughs> but I don't, I really, really try not to. And when I feel myself getting annoyed, getting, you know, a little spicy, I take an internet break right? I am, I've been on a vacation lately. I was getting a little bit snippy here and there among other reasons why I needed to take a break. But, um, yeah, so I think that's a, you know, that's another thing to really think about with this self-development is that you really, we got to limit how we, how we talk to people, our expressions to other people, because it changes how, it changes our frequency, our vi vibration. Here comes my cat. <laughs> All right, get out of here, please. Oh, I love you, but my goodness, TT, these cats, they just, they, um, they come in and they take over. Okay, so I want to look at this, this mirrored. And I think that this is so interesting because they look so similar. Um, we have two turtles, okay? And I feel that this really is that you have somebody in your life, in your space, in your, uh, you know, um, what am I trying to say? In your daily life, maybe in your home, maybe it's your partner, maybe it's a good friend, maybe it's, you know, a family member you're close with. They really match your energy. And that has been so, I think, so beneficial to you and for you to stay this stay the course with this. Okay. I think that when you have somebody who, um, you can see very clearly, um, parts of yourself within them and they're obviously beneficial to this person, to you, it makes it so much easier. And I'm going to use this working out, losing weight thing, um, as an example again, sorry. Um, but you know, like when, like in my household, when I, when I'm trying to lose weight or working out or eat, not even just trying to lose weight, just try, I try, my goal usually is I want to keep my stamina up. I want to be able to, you know, chase my kid around and play with her and do all the chores I need to do and be able to carry stuff. And, you know, I have that like fiery kind of, and that goes with this card. I got that fiery kind of, um, ain't no man gonna do, <laughs> do this for me. I'm going to carry my own dang groceries. You know what I mean? So, um, when I get into these places where I'm doing, you know, uh, physical exercise, working on my health, that kind of stuff. I need my partner to be, you know, matching my energy because we keep each other motivated. And that is, you know, 
that's what keeps me going. That's what really, um, you know, let's like, let's walk a mile together. Let's do that before we start work today. You know, that kind of thing. Um, let's, you know, <laughs> let's one of us say, let's not have the pizza tonight. Okay, babe, you know, um, and that's what's helpful for me. And so anyways, I think you have somebody matching your energy and that's been a great, great help, great asset. I also want to um, point out there's a T right there. You have a T person going on or somebody who is, maybe it's this turtle person, but with a T name. Their name seems to be uh, maybe starting with a T or some, some aspect of them, um, a describing word would be with that T. We also have an S. Okay, and um, I see these two birds. Okay, right next. Oh, and maybe I was on it. Okay, we have the S, and then we have these two birds, and they look almost like falcons, like a a falcon or a hawk. Kind of reminds me of Horus, like a Horus glyph, and then a baby right behind it. So I really think that um, there is also this. I feel like there's definitely like this aspect of family. Um, maybe your child is living with you. Maybe it's an adult child. Maybe it's, um, maybe they're young, like, you know, you're still raising your kids um, or child. And I think that this is very centric to your, um, this, this want and need for this self evolution and not only to just keep doing these things that like only last for, you know, a couple days, a couple weeks, a couple months, but really implementing new things in your life that are going to become part of your existence, how you exist, your world perception versus um, you know, just something that you're into for the moment, which those things are also fine. Don't get me wrong. I go through tons of phases of being into this, into that, whatever, you know, and that stuff's fine because, um, all of those little bits and pieces of information and experience all are, you know, they, they get put into the bank of, um, of experience of who you are you know, or well, anyways, how you experience yourself and, and how other people experience you and so on. Okay. I think it's wonderful to try things, continue to do that. I think I was just talking to my husband the other day and this is kind of off topic, but I was just telling him like, you know, the days when I wake up and I feel like I just know it's gonna be a bad day like I just feel mentally not there maybe foggy tired whatever I don't want to do anything um I might be feeling depressed or anxiety or especially feelings of being out of control of your um not like super out of control of your life but like just yeah like you have anxiety about living right existential anxiety anxiety or just you know things are um you have things going on in your life that are giving you you know the depression anxiety feelings um the thing that i have learned is that when we learn something new that really will help you get out of that frame of mind so even if it's something like learning how to um you know fix a tile that's broken in your bathroom or um you know i don't i was like how i learned how to get certain stains out of clothes or how to cook a different kind of meal or you know i don't know just learn about something on wikipedia go down a wikipedia rabbit hole but even but even more so if it's something that is tactile that you're doing physically with your hands and mind and your problem solving that is such a helpful thing to get out of those anxiety feelings do like be active do something that you know takes your um attention and efforts Okay. And, um, I think that, you know, I don't know. I just wanted to bring that up. <laughs> okay. So we also have, um, this beautiful little flower 
and um you know i think that that's just a another sign of the blooming happening i see this kind of it almost looks like a griffin is that how you say it griffin or griffith griffin griffin um i think that's like the lion dragon right if i'm wrong tell me in the comments okay um and I think that this is very much, and then on top of it, we kind of have this, it almost looks like, I don't know, it almost looks like a, like a being kind of laying down and touching the back of it. I, this to me, this formation makes me 100% believe that you are very protected in your path in your life right now that spirit is watching over you not only spirit i feel that um your household deity and what is the household deity lenore um it's you know well there are i mean in mythology which i do believe and implement in my own home <laughs> um that there are different kind of intelligences uh different deities or energies presences that watch over different aspects of your house so your doors your windows your hearth your or stove okay that would be like the stove the water that runs to your house the bathrooms um you know different different things so we leave you know talisman or offerings or cleanse the spaces keep the energies clean keep the um, you know, new coming in and the outgoing, the old going out. Okay. And we do this to honor our space, to honor our, um, to honor the spirits and the energies that look over us. Okay. And I've talked about this a lot with the backyard animals and spirits, but I also do this in my own home as well, because I truly believe this is what helps keep myself and my family safe and happy. And, you know, our house, functioning you know to some degree and yes i'm very superstitious but i feel like this is one of those kinds of beings and now this to me would be related to kind of more of the exterior entrances to your house so front door back door um you know door to a balcony those kind of things but um keeping your house safe from um in intruders prying eyes the evil eye um whatever you'd like to uh call it okay so i think that you're very very protected right now that energy is really really um alive and active and i think it would be great if you you know left some offerings <laughs> for your household spirits or uh deities um, and so you can do things like put fruit in the windows or, um, offer cut flowers or rocks. I like to, I like to do stones and, um, woven, um, grass. Well, depending on the time of year, woven grasses, woven kinds of sticks. I like really like using, um, grapevines that have been dried out and um really could be anything that you uh that you feel um fits your vibe another thing to think about getting is maybe like some kind of statue to put in by your front door or um you know out in your yard somewhere and as kind of like a um manifested kind of um what's the word not effigy but um kind of just like you know an example of the spirit whatever spe however you feel the energy is that protects your house um you know find something that that is exemplified in of that and um in a statue and put it outside one of mine, I have a few, but one of mine is a little frog. <laughs> and that's who, that's one of my big protectors. Okay, so what else do we have? I wanted to look at this one here. This is a person walking. You can see the feet the, all the way up here, head. And then overhead, we have that beautiful solar energy. And that is right up there in the spiritual, into the mental, and... Um, 
the you know the kind of things you're thinking about your uh emotional wellness and i really think all this is so in line down into that physical realm as well and i think you're just really being so blessed by this creative um you know very solar masculine kind of energy um very protective very active very um and let's let's go ahead and pull this up this is the um knight of wands and this would also be the king of wands in other decks uh this is the thoth deck and we see this is fire on fire on fire on fire <laughs> okay so um this is like a very masculine um energy the very creative force of the universe the sacred and secret fires that um are the kind of the the motivating um element of life and and um the sexual energies but also the creative energies okay so i think you just are so ready to just do this thing you know and but you're tempered which is the um that's the big key here is the with the turtle energy you're going slow and steady you're protecting yourself you're thinking about um you know like things like psychic wellness psychic um psychic protection taking like i'm saying making offerings to the things that keep your house while your life moving um really you know spending some time in your spiritual realms doing all of those things, but most importantly, really, really honoring yourself, honoring the things that you need, you want, the things that, um, you know, have been making your life the beautiful thing that it is, okay? And keeping your peace, very much protecting your peace. Okay, I wanna show you, we have one, two, three, four. So I think in this next month, okay, coming up here, um, in these next four weeks, uh, I really think that you're going to have, you're going to have some things that are really going to test your, uh, ability to stay, um, cool as a cucumber, right? To stay cool, calm, collected. And, um, I really, I really, really, really just think in my own opinion, Try to stay in that taking it slow. Don't be reactionary. Don't say things you don't mean. Don't think, don't say things you mean if they're not nice, right? Let's like really, really get back to that golden rule. Um, or, you know, just think about if this benefits you more, think about the karma that, you know, that you, you're not trying to take on more karmic debt are you <laughs> you know so let's just keep the things to ourselves and really think about okay this person this situation this tone this inaction or um thing that this person did whatever it is it, i notice it's really making me feel and then you you know fill in whatever that emotion or um impulse or reaction is but deal with that privately with yourself okay do and i'm not saying to bottle up all of these feelings or all these thoughts you can get them out in ways that are productive okay put that energy that fire that anger that annoyance whatever it is put it into some things that are going to work for you that are gonna pay for you you know what I mean? Like, um, save that stuff for your creative projects. Save that stuff for cutting wood, <laughs> you know, or whatever, doing some yard work or um, screaming at the sky, whatever it is. Pro Shout out to Primal Screaming. I love it. And I think we all need to get into the practice of <laughs> going outside and screaming from our core whenever we need to, you know, to let some of that um, energy out. Okay. And so I think in these next four weeks, it's just going to be more, um, 
there's going to be more situations for you to practice some of the stuff that you've really, really come into recently. Okay. And so that's my reading for you today, Virgo. And, um, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. I'm always so honored to bring these messages to you. I thank you. Um, if you would be so kind as to like the video, it helps me to get into the algorithm. Um, if you have not subscribed to the channel, think about doing that. Hit the little bell thing. It'll give you notifications of when the next videos come out. Uh, you can leave a comment. I love hearing from each and every one of you. And um, if you're interested in a personal reading, uh, I would love to do one for you. So you just go into the description of the video and there are instructions as to how to book one. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, Virgo. We will see you again in 12 days. In the meantime, go ahead and watch your other placements. All right, have a wonderful day.